Good morning and welcome to all this service of morning prayer on Monday the 13th of July. It's lovely to have your company today. Um, can't promise sunny weather, but sunny company all the same. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's compassion. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. For the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old, and endures for ever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant, and remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 98 The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen their salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre. With the lyre and the voice of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sound praises before the Lord, the King. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness he shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. The Lord has made known his salvation. Lord God, just and true, you make your salvation known in the sight of the nations. Tune the song of our hearts to the music of creation as you come among us to judge the earth through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So this morning we begin reading through the first book of Samuel. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 20. There was a certain man of Ramathiam, a Zufite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeho, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, the Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penaniah. Penaniah had children but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his town to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, 
where he had two sons of where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phineas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife Peninnah and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her severely to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year after year, as often she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband, Elkanah, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow. O Lord of hosts, if only you would look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, and I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. Then she said, Let your servant find favour in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Bama. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Here ends our first reading. Song of Deliverance All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, God is my salvation. <clears throat> I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. We continue our readings from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And he, as he rode along, 
People kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would, cr would shout out. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of all their sins, the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. So let us pray. So Lord, as we begin this new week, with all that it will bring us, so we thank you for your presence with us in our lives, for the guidance we receive through the Holy Spirit, the strength we receive from knowing that Jesus walks alongside us, and as we enjoy the beauty of creation around us and each other's company virtually, as well as through our conversations that we will hold, so we thank you, Lord, for all that you give to each one of us. We pray for those who will be starting work once again today, for those whose businesses and places of work will be opening up for the first time. We pray for the anxieties that they may feel, but also perhaps the joy they feel at being able to get back to work. We thank you for our services yesterday for those who joined us at church and those who joined us online. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to open up our buildings once again. We pray for our schools and for those young people who will be going back to school this week. For those for whom this has been a very difficult time. For our young people who would miss their friends and the daily routine of school. We pray for our young people and also for those who teach and support them. From our prayer intention today, we pray for public health professionals and all in positions of influence, that they would have wisdom and compassion as they analyse statistics and research and monitor the virus in each of our communities. We pray for those who do make decisions on our behalf for those in government and those who lead nations, for those who have to try to work through all the information they are given to make those right and good decisions for us all. We pray that they are guided always by safety and care for the people that they represent. We pray for those areas that face spikes in the virus 
all the anxiety that brings to the local residents, for those places in local lockdown still, and for those who may be facing them. We pray, Lord, that we would have the strength and courage to do the things that we are supposed to be doing. So we pray for our communities, for the places where we would usually find ourselves, for our places of work, for local shops, for our town. We pray for those who have continued to work throughout this time, either going to work or working from home. We pray for those who continue to be furloughed and for those who've lost their employment or whose employment is under threat at this time. Lord, we ask for your strength to be with them in these uncertain and difficult and challenging times. We continue to pray for the work of the National Health Service across its many different spheres and roles. We pray for those who work within it and for those who find themselves using it. We pray for those in hospital and for those who work there, those who are on the front line and those who work very much behind the scenes in essential roles to make sure that everything can happen. We pray for the work of the hospice, for its care for those coming to the end of their lives. We pray for our local care homes for the staff and the residents, and for family who've missed visiting their loved ones. We pray for district nurses and community workers who go out and provide help and care in people's homes without which they would be lost. We pray for our GP surgeries and the work done there, and also for our local pharmacies. And as we bring to you, Lord, those we know who are in need of your healing touch, we know that there are so many we name before you, so many we carry in our hearts and minds. And so we pray for Bridget, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, Morris, Margaret, Joyce, Mary, Marion Walsh, Jordan and Joyce. Lord, May they know your presence today. May you comfort and strengthen them, bring them peace in mind, body and spirit, as well as healing from their pain. And give strength to those who care for them, wherever they find themselves this day. So we pray for those who have died, those who have died recently, those who have died this past night, and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. We pray especially for John Burkett, for his family and friends as his funeral takes place today. We pray for those who will be unable to join us for that service. Lord, be with all those who mourn and carry that pain of bereavement with them, that they may come to know the resurrection and the hope of eternal life for us all. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer which we offer for all faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you for joining me for this service of morning prayer today, either live or a little bit later on as you've had opportunity to watch. I hope that you have a good day today with whatever this day may be bringing you and that you take care and look after yourselves. This evening there will be a service of evening prayer at five o'clock as usual and hopefully you may be able to join me for that service as well. In the meantime, do take care and you remain as always in my prayers.